uh, just to get things rolling and so I can stop talking, because I'm sure you're tired of listening to me, I'll, uh, I'll have each of the panels just uh, uh, talk for two minutes about uh, uh, who they are, where they come from, and their uh, experience with open source. So, uh, Roger, would you like to lead us off? Okay, so I think first a word of explanation, you see me hobbling around here. Um, I guess the first word of bio is I'm too old to be playing football, or soccer as they call it in the United States. <laughs> um, second thing is if my wife asks how I'm doing, tell her it was just fine. It wasn't a bad idea to come up here, it was just fine. That could save me a lot of grief back home. So I'm an English guy living in New York, running a software company based in California. Um, uh, from 89 through 2006, I actually worked uh, in technology around Wall Street. So I also have to say at this point, I never sold toxic waste. I never had anything to do with the trading side. I was purely on the IT side. Uh, Wall Street is now, of course, reviled around the world. Um, but actually, it was a fun place to do technology because it's a place that tends to adopt things pretty early, certainly early in open source. And uh, for the six years I spent at the stock exchange, um, my team were able to really move much more quickly. They were able to innovate more quickly by working with open source projects and open source uh, providers. Um, and then secondarily, they were able to uh, drive down costs by taking the combination of open source and open standards, getting the vendors to compete vigorously with each other, um, allowed us to quite substantially reduce our costs. So that was kind of my introduction to open source as a user for many years. Um, and uh, I joined Ingress in 2006. Um, I had thought about doing another CIO role, but uh, I was approached about this, and I really thought that uh, open source really ought to provide a true alternative in the area of enterprise database. Right. So something with similar functionality as a Sybase or an Oracle or a SQL Server with all the advantages of open source. And when I was approached about that, I started digging around because um, although I'd used a fair amount of open source, we hadn't done too much on the database side. And I came to the conclusion that really this is the only company I could see out there that had A, the technology and 30 years of investment in the technology and B, it's an uncompromising open source model with uh, a really good support organization because I'm one of these people, I like to buy support. I'm one of those type of people. I like to sleep at night. So. Uh, uh, that's why I joined Ingress in 2006, and uh, the company has done tremendously well. We've grown from 26 million in 06 to 68 million in 08, and that's all for me. John? Uh, I've been working in the federal government for over 25 years uh, in several departments, uh, both uh, some scientific base agency as well as uh, central agencies. Uh, I've been using open source uh, and promoting use of open source uh, for a very long time in government. And uh, you know, some people are, like many people are aware that there is a significant portion of open source in government already. It's not always visible, but it's there. Uh, and anyway, I can testify to that. Um, from, uh, I started the Solutions Group, I guess, in 1998. Um, and my introduction to open source really came from the fact I was at a, a proprietary software vendor of uh, web mapping technologies beforehand. Uh, left the company and started up a consulting firm around those technologies and suddenly discovered the perils of having lost control of code um, on the other side and bugs that couldn't get fixed and many other issues. So um, that quickly led us as a group to find an alternative that we could get back under control of and that of course led us open source. So um, that was 10 years ago. Uh, the technology we found was very young and new but very solid at its early stage. So there's only a couple hundred installations of that at the time and, and when we got involved um, since then corporately because we needed it for our customers, uh, over the years we ended up contributing about 50% of the code at one point and uh, that's grown to about two or three hundred thousand install base and that's fine. So um, that's how we really got immersed in it and learned a lot about um, the good, the bad, and the ugly around open source. I mean to be truthful about it, what works, what doesn't. There's a lot of places it's very effective for and sometimes not. So um, you know, through that applied all that knowledge to where we're at today. Um, well, we got uh, involved in, in open open source because of uh, Ross McCormick over here, who, uh, after years and years of, of, uh, of involvement and dis philosophical discussions, um, um, finally uh, led uh, Open Concept down the line of, of uh, both uh, developing open source tools as well as, as using them. And, and uh, uh, we we uh, had developed a, a multilingual content management system for a number of years called Backend, but uh, decided, I guess now almost four years ago, to 
drop that and to move over to, to Drupal, which is a, a very large open source content management system that's, that's well supported and got uh, a large community of users around the world. We came back uh, just recently in Washington, at the, the beginning of March uh, from Washington, D.C., where there were a, <coughs> there was a conference of uh, 1,400 uh, users and developers of, of Drupal and everyone from uh, the Economist to the Onion to you know Avril Lavigne and uh, the NDP are using <laughs> using the software. So it's a really a diverse platform. And, and uh, um, in the last, we've done work for on and off for government uh, uh, for the last uh, well since we've been in business. But um, in the last year, there's been a lot more work uh, with government, and we've been been pushing for um, for adoption of open source with, within government much more strongly, particularly um, with the, uh, the common look and feel and, and uh, the whole push for a standardized uh, approach, an accessible approach towards uh, a web presence. And, and uh, from a security pr perspective, from an accessibility perspective, there's so many ways that, that government web presence can be so much better served by the adoption of a, uh, an open source platform like Drupal to go off and implement and to deliver the you know, millions of web pages that uh, that are being served up by by government technology on a daily basis, but are not particularly well maintained or, or, or delivered in, uh, in, at the present moment. So we sort of uh, have gotten into the advocacy side with with government on that front, and, and uh, uh, but also work with unions and nonprofits and, and other organizations to uh, to try and, and uh, produce uh, affordable and, and um, um, collaborative tools. Interesting. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Don. Uh, so I'm Donald Smith. I'm with the Eclipse Foundation. And uh, for those of you that don't know what the Eclipse Foundation is, we're uh, an independent, not-for-profit foundation that supports the Eclipse ecosystem. Uh, we have uh, about 15 people on staff. Many of us are here in, uh, in Ottawa. Um, I'm in business development, or we, we coyly like to call it ecosystem development. Uh, at the end of the day, my goal is to make sure that our 180 members uh, make money from participating in open source. Uh, and so there's, there's lots of programs and activities and, and so on that we, we put forward to, uh, to assist with that. Um, I've been doing this for three and a half years now and uh, frankly there's been a steep learning curve and uh, uh, I love uh, you know, getting out and, and seeing how different companies are making money different ways uh, using open source.